Hi guys! This is Elena. And Michelle. I'm a 3D artist. And I'm a 3D sister. So this week is my first kind of 3D printing related video, but I'm not going to show the process of it yet. It's just the final render isn't a final render. It's just, it's something I printed out. <laughs> Yay! But um, I had this idea for making pendants, uh, like necklace pendants in 3D and printing them on, and fun stuff, like for necklaces. Did I already say that? Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> so... I was thinking about how, like, my name, Elena, it's spelled in a way that I wouldn't ever find that among ugh, all those, like, name tag things. Like, yeah. my name is not one of those optimal ones. All my siblings are named with optimal names, and both my parents yeah, well, are named... Eric. Oh, yeah, that's tricky. Eric with a K. So he and I just don't really get our fair share of stuff. <laughs> but anyway, I was thinking along that note, my last name. So I was thinking I wanted to make one for my last name, but not just S-I-U. I wanted the written out, like strokes of it. So I made that and I made a fun pendant that goes along with it. And the thing with Sue is that it has a few different translations and uh, one of them is dawn, like sunrise. So I did a couple of designs that incorporate the sun and something fun that I learned about 3D printing and all the like slicing software that you have to put your model through before it can print is that those programs don't care about your topology. So it's like usually I try to make everything connect all nicely and make everything flow, like all the geometry go in a nice way. But with this, I just, I made the shapes I liked and then I don't know if you call it a function or a tool, but it's like Boolean. If you overlap two different meshes, and you, you like choose union or difference or whatever, then it'll like chop out that space from like the second mesh you select. It'll make more sense when it happens on screen. I don't know why I'm talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> so you like inverted it, made the shapes, and instead of putting it on, you took it off. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh. In the future. So <laughs> this was from maybe a month and a half ago, this footage, um, but... It was a good like first experiment for 3D printing to make because it gets a small amount of, of stuff to print, so I wasn't wasting a bunch of resin trying to figure all this out. Um, and it was also, I didn't have to use supports for it because it was flat and the, just the way it was arranged, I didn't have to wrap my head around a whole new technical process while I was already working with the new technical process of printing in the first place. So that was really convenient for me. But it's tricky because in this past week, I made a little bookmark. And with that, I was trying to do booleans and like scoop out the hollowed shapes of the design I was creating. And it just wasn't really working for some reason. And I'm still not sure why that is. But eventually, I just decided I was going to lay it on, like the design will be raised instead of dug out in hollow. It's like all these things I have to keep on learning about every so often I come to Michelle like I have to learn this new technical skill <laughs> and I'm like I can just teach you without you having to watch any tutorials it would be just nice ask. sure would be nice you never ask <laughs> that's the name there are so few fonts though for that accommodate a Chinese um so I just had to choose out of the like five options that I had which one do I like best or what I could have done is found like a sample of it handwritten out or written out myself and like how did you snap it into the center like that um by snapping it <laughs> i feel like you often do that <laughs> how did you make that thing do this i just did the do this button <laughs> yeah i mean it's an intelligent program <laughs> yeah this one was good i made a second one and i think it printed all right by the end and like i can show the final look for the second pendant but i like this one most of all like this one just it worked out Gosh, it was embarrassing though because I wanted all these pendants to be like I got a spray paint and I spray tape. <laughs> <Ta -da! laughs> I painted them gold, but and like I have a gas mask to deal with the alcohol that is used to clean the resin after you're done printing, and like you don't want to breathe that type of alcohol in, and you don't even really want to breathe the resin in if there there are fumes and stuff. So like I had a gas mask available to me, but when I was spray painting these pendants afterward. I felt too embarrassed. Like I was in the front yard area and our neighbors were outside and I was just like, they're going to see me being <laughs> such a weirdo. <laughs> like I can't bring shame on this family by acting <laughs> like I'm, it's apocalypse. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, so I just, I was outside and spray painting without a gas mask, even though I have one, it felt so unhealthy. <laughs> Dishonor on you, dishonor on your cow. <laughs> dishonor on my gas mask. <laughs> 
but yeah, in the future, I think I'm just gonna just gonna be good about it. I'm just gonna wear the gas mask and be embarrassed. Mm-hmm. I'll just be that weirdo. It's not like we talked to those neighbors. It's the ones directly across from us. It's not like they would say like, "Hey, there was someone there who had a gas mask. Are you aware of this?" <laughs> yeah, that's my sister. She's being safe. Thank you very much. <laughs> He's our nice neighbor. He plowed our driveway. He plowed the whole street. <laughs> Whoa. He's a nice guy. <laughs> I feel like he doesn't consistently wave to the kids when we, when they wave at him, though. Hmm. It's a big issue. Oh, my. We're meaning to send him a letter about it. Yowza. And he has a child, or maybe children. <laughs> <so> <laughs> yes, we don't know. Sure. <laughs> See, like, offhand, I really thought that he, there were, like, multiple boys who lived in this house across the street. Because it seemed like I saw so many of them, and... There was just a bunch, but then Michelle was like, there's just one child there, like mm-hmm. just the one boy. And I believed her because it's like, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen any of them at the same time. So I just, like one boy who was wearing different clothes and I just <laughs> have some facial blindness. But then later I saw two boys at the same time. <laughs> so it's like there might have been a friend visiting or I don't know, maybe a cousin. Maybe there was just oh. some visitors. I don't know. Because I don't know if I've seen two boys at the same time since then. Yeah. Just that one day. It's a mystery. It's very important. We should just go over and ask. <laughs> <laughs> How many children live here? Just asking for a friend. We are conducting a census of the neighborhood. <laughs> Gosh, that is tricky though because it seems like every house on the, in this cul-de-sac has like very young children, Avery and Felicity's age. And it's just that one house that has a teenage boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wonder if he feels left out. I want to ride bikes with you guys. I know. I don't have training wheels either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one had some fun potential, but there were just too many teeny tiny details, and the resin kind of got clogged in all the details, so it just didn't work out very nicely. But those were supposed to be kind of like clouds-ish. Mm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I had to select the negative space first. We, um, we were at work and I was saying, we need to go to the store and get pasta sauce because I knew the grocery <laughs> delivery wasn't going to have pasta sauce because they sent me an email. And so I was telling the kids like, okay, so we're going to go to the grocery store, we're going to get pasta sauce. And I was like, oh, and olives. So Avery, remind me olives. And then they were dancing around, um, pasta sauce, pasta sauce, olives. Um, <laughs> and then Mari asked, what are you guys making? I was like, oh, Aunt Elena's making us some baked ziti. And she's like, oh, and the kids were like, ziti. <laughs> anyway, for some reason, when we get to the store... It's not pasta sauce and olives anymore. It's roast beef. <laughs> we need roast beef. Like, how did that turn into roast beef? Stop <laughs> saying that. You needed help remembering that we were kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> not really, because it's just two things. But it's just still, I was like, I don't know where your ma- your brain switched over. <laughs> roast beef. Oh, I was just loaf. thinking, because we read, I mean, I guess it was like a week ago now, <laughs> but we just read the Grinch Curl Stole Christmas mm. book, The Roast Beast. Okay. So maybe that was just in his head. Yeah. Darling sweet cherubs. I think I'm done with this second design. Oh, no, I need to put the name in the middle. Yeah, I have this whole plan to make different ones for the Zodiac, like different necklaces for each Mm. one. But I would want to come up with cute little original designs um, in the center of each pendant as well. Like, Or, I mean, on the outside, borders of the pendant. And I don't know. It's like I need to just tap into my creative brain. (sighs) It's so hard sometimes. (laughs) And I've learned a lot since this point because I feel like I did all these harsh edges and that's not the way I'm doing things now. So I think, ta-da! If I wanted this design to work better in the future, I could just not do the harsh edges like I did before. Like, I think I know how to make this particular one work better. So maybe in the future you'll see that. I don't know yet. But anyway, thank you for watching. See you next time.